First, we're going to lift up the cover of the 3D printer so that you can see all the items inside. When you're printing, you'll want to keep this cover down as to keep the heat inside of the container. All 3D printers have three axes of control. X, Y, and Z, which is the head moving up and down. Be sure not to do that by, by yourself as it can throw off the orientation. This is for demonstration only. This is called the bed. This is where your part will be printed. This part is covered with a green tape which helps adhesion of the part to the bed. This tray is actually heated to about 110 degrees to also help with adhesion. So be sure not to touch that when you're printed because it's hot. In the back of the printer, you can see the roll of filament. This is the material which you use to 3D print. It goes up through a roller and over a pulley and then goes down into the extrusion head. The extrusion head grips that extrusion and then pushes it through the hot end of the extruder. And that's where your print actually happens. During your print, that hot end is around 230 degrees Celsius. So also be sure not to touch that. You also have control over things like LED lights to help make your printer be able to easier see. When you're running the 3D printer, you can turn them on. And if you, when you're done, make sure to turn them off. Additionally, when we talk about loading and unloading of the, of the filament, you'll need to know that there is a cutter for the filament located right on the top. But we'll get to that later. When you have a part that you have designed in SOLIDWORKS and you would like to take that to the 3D printer, make a file known as an STL file. When you are in SOLIDWORKS and you have your model, go to File, Save As, and then save as type .stl. When you click an STL, you also need to click the Options menu. The Options menu shows you what resolution your part is going to be. For all printing in the Innovation Gym, please select the Fine option and click OK. Then you can name your file and click OK and save its location. The next step in 3D printing with the poly printer is to use the piece of software called KISS Slicer. KISS Slicer is, takes your STL file that you have generated in SOLIDWORKS or other 3D software and turns it into a format which the 3D printer can read. So you can go to File open your STL file and your file will be imported. You can see a visualization and by clicking the center scroll wheel you can actually roll it around in the view. Your part may or may not come in in the proper orientation depending on how you drew it in SOLIDWORKS. In order to rotate this, go up to the image of it, of it right here on the right and you right click and say transform axes. You can then use the Y up or X up tools to rotate your part to the proper orientation. In that same menu, you have the ability to scale your part. If you want it half size, by typing 0.5, you can scale it down by half. If you want to double the size, you can do it by two. And you can always revert to the original height or size that you imported your part as. Also in this menu, you have the ability to add multiples of the exact same part if you needed to do so. In addition, if you had multiple different parts that you wanted to do, you can just open those different, those different parts as well, and they will also be imported and then show up on the list themselves. This software is all about selecting the settings which you need for your individual part. 
down here in the bottom area, there's lots of different settings talking about how solid the part is, the number of loops, things about the extrusion. These settings are not ones that if you do not know what you're doing, that you want to modify. We have created predefined settings for you that all you have to do is drop down the menu and say, Innovation Gym, this is just a standard part. And the settings will be preset, and your part will have a much better chance of being successful and being a good part than if you modify these settings. The next tab over is known as the support tab. Parts that have underhangs and overcuts need to be supported otherwise the plastic will just droop. So normally this setting I leave at the rough setting. If you have a part that requires a lot of detail you can increase this to maybe the fine setting or the dense setting. Doing so will use more material and make your print take longer to complete. The last thing that you really can modify is this slider that slides between fast and precise. If you want your part quickly, leave it over at the fast setting, but this will mean that the resolution of your part is slightly less. If you are concerned mostly with the resolution and the finish of your part, slide it over to the precise side or leave it somewhere in the middle. Once you have your settings the way that you would like them, click the button in the right corner that says Slice. This will break up your part into individual layers which the 3D printer will then read. You then click Save which will appear in the same location and you'll save this G-code file as a name. Be sure to save this on the desktop and not on a thumb drive as removal of a thumb drive with that file will cause the computer to crash. Once you save that file, you you can close KISS Slicer. The next step in the process is to use a piece of software called the printer interface. You can recognize it by this little icon of a guy with his tongue sticking out. You may notice when you open this that everything is grayed out. This is because the first thing you need to do is actually connect to the 3D printer. Hit connect and then you'll see an indicator here that says the printer is now online. Also, these options now show up. This icon area allows you to actually move the 3D printer and control it. Sometimes the printer will need to be homed prior to you being able to have manual control. But selecting each one of these, it will move in increments of millimeters based on the number that you click. So you have complete control of the printer. The next step that you need to do is you need to set the bed and the heating nozzle to actually warm up. You do that by clicking the button set and set. And then you can see these lights come on and it monitors the, the temperature of the printer. If you would like to see a graph of this, you can click the checkbox that says monitor printer. The head will heat up rather quickly. It will take less than a minute, while the bed will take up to eight minutes to get completely warm. Once this has started to heat up, you can now open your G-code file that you have created in KISS Slicer. What this will do is this will then show you the individual layers of your printer and over on the right hand side it will tell you the estimated duration that this print will take, in this case 8 minutes, and it will also tell you the amount of filament that is used in this printer. These numbers are important because every single print that's done on these printers must be logged and there is a link for that on the desktop of the 3D printer. While we are waiting on the bed to heat up, I'd like to show you some other features which may be useful to you. If you click on the area where the icon is to show you your print, you can actually scroll through all of the different layers 
that your print is going to do. So every individual layer, every time I change, it will show you. As you can see, this part is majorly hollow with the structure being built on the outside. Now that the printer is up to temperature, you must first close the lid and then printing is as simple as hitting the print button. You may notice a slight delay because the temperature needs to be elevated for the first layer to help with adhesion. When the head reaches the temperature it's needed, the printer will start automatically. The first thing that the printer does is deposit three small dots of filament onto the bed. This is to make sure the filament is flowing and then it will start printing your part. Make sure to stay and watch your part at least through the first two layers of printing to make sure that the part does not come off of the bed as this is one of the most common problems that happens with the 3D printer. Once your print is complete, the tray will auto-extend. It is now safe to open the lid of the, of the 3D printer, but don't go immediately trying to grab your part. You will want to wait at least one to two minutes before you try to remove your part from the tray. By opening the lid, you allow the heat out and it will cool. Also, immediately following your print, the head and the bed will also turn off, so they will start to lose heat. For the removal of your part, you're going to use this small little spatula scraper, which can usually be found on the table by one of the two 3D printers. To remove a part, all you have to do is very, very gently just get the corner of the scraper underneath one corner. Be sure not to touch the tray because it is probably still very hot. If you're seeing a lot of resistance, do not continue to scrape and wait another minute until your part is a little bit cooler. Scraping will do two things, possible damage to the machine and the tape, but also because your part is still warm, you actually may deform the warm plastic and it won't be accurate to your design file. Now that we've waited a bit longer, let's try to remove that part again. As you can see, now that the part is, is a lot cooler, it comes off much cleaner. If you are done printing, your next step is to log your print by clicking the icon on the desktop and filling out the pertinent information. Make sure to note how much filament you used and your print duration prior to closing Pronterface. Your next step is to go and disconnect the printer and close it all down. One of the other things that you will commonly have to do with the 3D printer is change the filament. We have many different colors of filament that can all be used on the 3D printer. They must all be the exact type of filament as specified in the documentation. Now, Every person who uses the 3D printer is responsible to bring their own 3D printing filament and donate at least one roll to the Innovation Gym. If you are using the 3D printer as part of a course, such as the First Year Design Program or the Senior Design Program, please check with Greg as there are a specific filament used for those projects. Now, in order to change the filament, the head of the 3D printer must be hot, so be very careful when you're doing this in order not to burn yourself. 
if you just need to change the filament, make sure to set the heater to make sure that it's hot. You can see its temperature here in once you click monitor printer you can see its temperature that the heater is at 230 degrees and you are now safe to change the filament. Move, move the head by hand to the center where you can get to it. There is a yellow lever indicated by an arrow sign and all you need to do is press down on that yellow lever to release the filament and pull out on the filament itself. This will remove it. Now, using your other hand, roll that remaining filament back onto the roll. Once it's completely disconnected, you may remove the roll from the hanger on the back of it, on the back of the 3D printer. Take the new roll of filament and replace it onto the roll. Please note the orientation of the filament. The filament must be wrapped around the roll so that it comes off from the bottom of the filament roll. Feed the filament up through the black retaining ring and then around the filament switch. The yellow piece is actually an electronic sensor to make sure that there is filament there during the print. For example, if your roll of filament runs out in the middle of the print, the printer will automatically pause for you. But making sure that it's fed correctly is the only way to make sure that this feature works. Now, you need to have a clean end on the edge of the filament, so use the filament cutter at the top of the machine to cut a clean edge on the filament. Now, with your clean edge, repeat the process. P first thing you do is push down on that yellow handle and feed the filament in through the hole. Just keep pushing down a little bit until you feel resistance. And now the filament is loaded. If you want to be sure that your filament is loaded properly before you start your print, you can actually use this button here that says extrude, and it will extrude five millimeters of material. You want to make sure that you continually change your material until the color changes to the new material. There is a small reservoir of color a small reservoir of plastic that will be a delay before the color is revealed. As you can see, the color has already changed to the new filament color. You have now completed the process of changing a filament roll.